Hi, I'm Marlon Walker and I am live from Pelham's Wasteland and today I have got a new episode of my Western Hero tutorial series. Basically what I'm doing, um, as I talked about in, in another video, is that I'm going to create four different sort of generic characters for Western Hero, which is the hero system, um, for 6th edition. And um, essentially, I'm going to create a couple of characters, and I am going to uh, use that to talk about how those characters function in the world and all that sort of stuff. We're going to use an Excel spreadsheet, this Excel spreadsheet, to uh, calculate out the cost because it's a little more math than I can do in my head. It's really just addition. It's not that complicated but um, a little more math than I can do in my head to add up, you know, multiples of three to 100, that sort of thing. So we're gonna use that spreadsheet and we're gonna use the roll 20 sheet that I have got um, here. This is the Hero System 6th edition roll 20 sheet and I have the API set up also. So it'll do some cool stuff. Like if we go to the chat and I click OCB, It'll uh, say I've got three OCVs, so I make a hundred. So I make an attack roll. Attack twelve roll is twelve, and that means I hit a DCV two. The way that is calculated is that it is your OCV plus eleven minus three D six equals the DCV that you hit. So because it's essentially plus eleven minus twelve, we hit a DCV two which is, is fairly straightforward. And the API does this bit, is that it says like, oh, here's what you hit. And if we did a um, damage roll, um, which I don't have any set up yet right now, so we're not gonna do any of that. Um, but if we had a damage roll available, we um, could roll that and it would tell us how much um, stun or body we do. Um, as damage, which is the the two types of damage in hero system you have stun Which is sort of your bumps and bruises and it's used for like, you know The idea that even a in a superhero comic even a very powerful punch Doesn't actually do kind of like permanent damage to a character generally unlike in in real life obviously um, Versus body is your your meat points. That's where you know if you get hit by a killing attack it takes from body um, body damage tends to be much lower than stun but body points also are much lower than stun and so you you know cannot take that many uh killing attacks and in this game a lot of the attacks are killing attacks because a lot of them are are guns so um you know shooting somebody with a, a pistol is going to be a um, pretty dangerous thing so let's get started. This is the 100 point cowpoke um, and we will put player name Arlen and um, we're going to get started with our stuff. So basically I don't think we're going to um, modify any of our core characteristics, our strength, dex, con, intelligence, ego, and presence. Um, we're going to leave those as they are for right now because we only have 100 points to spend and I think we are mostly going to spend to get um re basically we're going to try to build our character fairly wide fairly broadly capable but not necessarily super good at any one thing um because that's the kind of game i like to play basically that's to be honest that's kind of what i like to do with this sort of thing so what we're going to do let me pull up the pdf and here we go i've got it so we're going to add one to OCV to four, and we're going to two to DCV to five. We close that, and now you see over here OCV four, DCV five. And we're going to go over here to the spreadsheet and do OCV plus one, DCV plus two, and that costs five and 10. So 15 of our points already spent, but that's going to help keep us alive, really. Um, I think that's pretty important. We are going to, how much does speed actually cost? 
10 CP per one speed. So we're not gonna spend any points in speed. We're not gonna spend any points in PD or ED, which is physical defense or energy defense, because that mostly affects stun. We are not going to spend any points on recovery to get a faster recovery. Um, we are gonna spend a couple of points to get a little bit higher um, uh, hit points, essentially. So we're gonna spend one CP to get 25 endurance. We are going to spend to get 15 body, which is another five CP. And we are going to get up to 25 stun as well. Um, actually, we're going to go up all the way to 30 stun. So now we have um, our 30, our body of 15, and our endurance of... 25 so that's going to make us just a little tougher in combat in addition to our dcv is going to make us get hit a little less often so let's put those in there so we have um in plus five costs one and um body plus five costs five and stun plus ten costs five and let's do a uh, total and we'll call this equals sum -da, uh, down to here. All right, we've got 26 points spent so far, just over a quarter of the points to spend on our Western hero. But that's okay. We've done most of the stuff that we're going to do with the core characteristics. We're going to do a little bit more. Um, and But a lot of the stuff we're going to do is with skills. So what we are going to do is we are going to use the uh, proficiency rules. Um, and basically what this does is this gives a character a 10 for a... Uh, characteristic based skill and that we also have familiarity which gives us an eight for one point so a 10 for two points an eight for one point or a characteristic base for three points generally um and then we can go let us go to the everyman skill list to get a good idea of what we need so we are going to do first off area knowledge at 10 early knowledge local at 10 we are going to do climbing at eight we are going to do uh charm at eight now we're going to do charm at 10 for a friendly character we are going to do deduction. Deduction at eight. We are going to do language English. Idiomatic plus literate. And that doesn't have a rating, but that gives us basically we're a, we're a native English speaker who knows essentially all of English stuff. Um, we are also going to do language Spanish. And we're going to go to the language page so that I can find how much it's actually going to cost us. And we're going to do... Basic, and that's gonna cost us one point. So let's put this stuff on the character, on the, the charge sheet. So area, knowledge, 10. What else do we have? We have climbing eight, charm 10. Climbing eight, charm 10. Deduction. Dead auction eight language English native 
idiomatic literate language Spanish basic. And so that costs us two points, costs us one point, costs us two points, costs us one point, costs us four points, costs us one point. We're at 37 points for our hero spent so far. Now, we're gonna see what else the gun, they think the gunslinger um, basic package should have. Um, medicine. Medicine at. 10, persuasion at 10, profession, cowboy, it's going to be actually at dex, um, Writing is also going to be at dex plus one to give us a writing skill of 12. Stealth 10. Survival at 10. Tracking at 10 and trading at 10. So medicine and persuasion medicine, persuasion, profession, cowboy, and riding One for writing, um, stealth, survival, tracking, trading. All right, two, two, three, four, two, 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 two. All right, so that has given us 56 total points that we have spent on our character so far. Um, and that is most of the gunslinger skills, but let us go through and double check and make sure there are no other skills that we want to get. Um, I think we shall get Analyze. Eight, and we'll put that up at the top so that it's in alphabetical order. We shall get animal handler at presence. Let's put those in. Analyze. 10 for two and um, animal handler presence or three. It is up to 61 points. What else do we need? What else do we need? We could probably use a break fall. Let's do break fall at dexterity. And we'll put that where it goes. That's for, you know, taking a hard thrown by a horse type thing. Um, we don't need that. We need. Um, do don't need any of that we are going to take fast draw at dexterity fast 
fast to draw at dexterity so that we're uh, going to have a little bit of capability in a gunfight. And then we are going to take... Um, I th Let's take gambling. That seems good. Gambling at 10. Two sixty-nine points. What else? What else? Um, we're not going to take any martial arts stuff. Not going to take lock picking mechanics. We are. Hmm. Let's boost our. What is our medicine at ten? Let's boost our medicine to uh, intelligence to get it to eleven. Um. So that's medicine. Int instead for three. So now we're at 70 points. We have 30 points left to spend. And we have a, a fairly good, um, let's do navigation. Navigation, no, navigation. 10. And... Let's do another point in writing also to give us to a third, no, to two points to get us to a 13. So navigation 10 is one point. Writing, where did I put writing dex plus two? It's actually five points instead of four. All right. Um, security system, shadowing, skill levels, sleight of hand, stealth, streetwise. Let's streetwise seems useful. Streetwise at presence. Streetwise at presence, survival, tactics, teamwork, tracking, trading, transportation, two weapon fighting. Triloquism, weapon familiarity, we need to do that. So, weapon familiarity, firearms, and weapon familiarity, common melee. So, what was that? That was streetwise at presence. Presence is three. Weapon familiarity firearms is going to be a three. I think it might technically be a two, but um, firearms are common are broad enough that I think it should be a three for this campaign. And weapon familiarity common melee for two more. We're at eighty points out of our hundred. And we are gonna take a, a little bit of Weapon Smith. Weapon Smith at eight. Weapon Smith, eight. For one point, and we need to adjust this, let's say to 51, just in case, 81 points. Total, we can close this editing for now. So this gives us a, a good broad range of skills in a lot of ways. We have a whole bunch of different skills. We're not that good at anything except writing. Writing is a 13. So the way skills work in the hero system is that you're trying to roll this given number or less on 3d6. So you can tell on these skills of eight, we really only have about a 25% chance of success when it calls for a roll. That is obviously not great. And especially if we start taking penalties, we'll have even less chance of success. But on the other hand, one of the things that the system talks about is the idea that if you have a skill at all, you may not have to roll for um, certain things. The idea being that you know if you don't have writing at all, you might be having to make dexterity checks to stay on horseback. But if you have writing and you're riding a broken horse, you probably don't need to ride unless it's a particularly um, 
strange situation, right? Like in combat or if you were, um, you know, in the middle of, you know, a horrific thunderstorm or something like that, that would call for rioting checks, perhaps even at penalties. But um, in normal circumstances, having the skill is enough to ensure a little bit of familiarity with it. And that's part of why I bought all of these skills instead of just boosting up my stats is because I feel like that's a that's a good thing for our character that our character you know for instance his climbing skill is an eight so actually trying to climb up a, a, a rock face or something probably got less than a 25 percent chance of doing that a maximum of about 25 but having the skill at all perhaps gives him enough familiarity to look at a rock face and think about who could climb it up that sort of thing. Deduction is the same way. So deduction at an eight means that we have um, very little, this 100 point cowpoke has very little chance relative to some of the other skills of making a successful deduction roll and therefore getting some, the way the deduction works is pretty cool. Dedu deduction is sort of like the GM can say, it looks like you're stumped, why don't you make a deduction roll to see if the character can think of something that you can't, that sort of thing. We don't have great odds of doing that, but it's nice to have it as sort of like, you know, extra card in the back pocket type thing. The skills that we're really much better at, so we have fast draw at 11. That's going to succeed not all the time, but it's going to succeed more often than not. And that's pretty cool. That is good. And it's a little better than our decks of 10, which means that we can use, you can use your fast draw rating to um, substitute for your deck score um, or something like that. I don't remember exactly how it works, but basically fast draw can be used in the first round of a combat to go first, which is gonna be a big deal for this character because this character does not have a whole lot of hit points or anything like that. It's not super, super tough or anything. Is, you know, capable and certainly, you know, one of the things about the way this character is going to function is that this character needs to, um, in combat, for instance, especially right now, we're going to add a little bit more combat ability in a minute, but this character, in order to function, is going to need to, like, get the drop on somebody. And a couple of these guys could be pretty deadly, right? If you had, you know, one um, deadly gunslinger versus, for instance, 600-point cowpokes, those 100-point cowpokes, with six of them, taking each of them taking a shot every turn or every time their turn comes up, that's a lot of chances to hit even a talented gunslinger. Um, which is not to say, so individually, this character is not that um, capable, not that dangerous. But in a group, they would be definitely be a little more dangerous. And um, in particular, one of the cool things about this is that, to be honest, this is a totally playable character uh, right now or with a couple other points because you can see we're only at 81 points out of our 100. So we can spend another um, couple of points, another 19 points to boost up some of these other stuff, maybe make our skills a little bit better and give us some more combat stuff. Um, and that will allow our character to... Um, you know, this is totally playable, right? Not going to be easy, not going to be a walk in the park, going to be relatively low power. This is going to be kind of a grim and gritty sort of campaign. Um, but this is definitely a, um, this 100 point cowpoke is sort of like a background in PC for a lot of campaigns or a lot of Western films, right? This is sort of like a hired on cowboy at a ranch of some sort who might contribute but more than likely, you know, as we get up into higher level point values, I'll talk about sort of Western films that fit some of, and Western stories that fit some of these higher point level characters and the way that that um, works out essentially. But, you know, that's, uh, yeah. So let's, let's keep going. We've got a little bit more to do on this character to get all the way up to 100 points. Um, we are going to um, doo -doo -doo. we're gonna get a uh, perk of contact eleven.
uh do, do, do four that's two points um plus one point plus one point plus two points so that is six points contact employer for six we're gonna do contact 11 employer and that is uh useful resources institution good relationship I don't know that that's necessarily the best way to model having an employer that we're on good terms with, but we can imagine that this character is a ranch hand, and so they've got good um, a good relationship with their um, you know ranch ranch uh, owner and all that sort of stuff who has some um, level of uh, power within the region, all of that sort of stuff. So we are also going to get, um, what else are we going to get? Animal friendship is really good. We are going to get, um, do, where is it? Where is it? Keen senses I I sight two. So let's go back over here and add our keen senses. Keen I sight is a plus two, so that's a thirteen. So we've got good odds of spotting something or someone. Um so that is do, 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 animal friendship, which is good for a cowboy, a horse wrangler, something, something like that. And that is, oh, that's 20. Jesus, I guess we're not going to get animal friendship. Uh, so that'll be something that we get at the next level. But we will get... Um, Keen eyesight two for two. Keen eyesight plus two for two points. That brings us up to 89. We are going to get um, light sleep. Light sleep. For a character that can, you know, get up and going pretty quick um mm -hmm. we're gonna get ride like the wind or four that brings us up to 96 we have four points left um What are we going to do with our last four points, guys? Light sleep, ride like the wind. Finished editing. Let us, let's, so let's bump our analyze up to 10 so that we don't get into bad fights. Let's bump our area knowledge local up to intelligence plus one. That's three points, so analyze up to, I already had it calculated at 10. Um, that's good. Um, our area knowledge local, area knowledge int plus one is going to be four. And let's bump our let's bump our profession cowboy up by two also. So we have a thirteen profession cowboy dex plus two is a five. 
100 points. That is our 100 point character. We have not bought, and bought we have not bought in, um, any equipment for him. Um, and we would put that under powers and we don't have super, we're not a particularly deadly combatant right now. But like I said, you know, if we had, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give, uh, offline, I'm going to fill out all of the, the weapon stuff. And then I can just copy this sheet onto a new sheet and have the same weapons. Um, the only, the last thing I'm going to give the character is something for free, which is a, um, uh, genre rule and so I'm going to do deadly blow first shot of a shootout pistol first shot of a shootout after fast draw pistol so basically, this is a um, one of the ideas that I had was that really um, there's something cool about um, this rule, which basically what this rule does is it bumps up the damage, the body damage done by a particular weapon in a particular situation for 12 points. We don't have 12 points to spend, but this is an idea that I had that I could just give this talent for free to literally every character in this uh, universe, in this world. And basically what that would mean is that this creates a sort of interesting genre consideration that when you quick draw a pistol and that first shot, if it connects, is gonna do extra damage. So it creates that feeling that you have in a lot of Western uh, films and TV shows and all that sort of stuff where that first shot is the deadliest, right? Once you, if you miss the first shot or if you have to fire multiple shots, it gets into a much more of a, you know, fan the hammer shootout rather than the kind of um, classic, you know, single shot. So it's either sort of one shot or a bunch of shots. And this little bit helps create that feel, which is really cool. And that's one of the things that I really like about the hero system is the stuff you can do like that. Um, so yeah, this is our... Our character, our 100 point cowpoke, not a particularly deadly combatant. Like I said, I'm gonna fill in his um, combat stuff in a little bit. But yeah, that is that is our character. He's, uh, and he's totally playable. That's one of the points that I was trying to make is that this 100 point cowpoke is definitely a playable character. Not a playable character who is super powerful, Right, not going to be. This is probably uh, maybe about the baseline, like I said, for most characters in the setting. Right, that 100 points that I spent on everything plus the free 12 point deadly blow bonus is about the baseline for most characters in the setting. So the average bartender, the average saloon girl, the average um, cowboy, you know, the average bandit, they're all going to be at about this 100-point level. Um, but they're going to spend their points a little differently depending on the sort of stuff that they do, right? That's sort of an idea um, that's cool in the hero system is they're going to they're spend their points a little differently depending. Um, but if you wanted to play a sort of low-powered, average, average character scraping by campaign, this is a totally playable character who definitely, you know, if they got... Um, you could fight a 150 point or a 200 point bandit if, if you you know stealthed up and got the drop on him had a big you know winchester rifle or something and to get a an aimed shot off plenty deadly plenty deadly in combat with even this character without a whole lot of bonuses so yeah that is our 100 point cowpoke like i said so look at these skills the skills that we're really good at riding and profession cowboy we have a little bit of a whole bunch of things. We also have a pretty good area knowledge local. Let's just make a roll to see. Ooh, we rolled a 13. We don't know whatever we were trying to learn about, um, trying to know about. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. We have the 12, so we can try again on something else. And we rolled a 12, so we succeeded at that roll. Um, so, yeah, we have a, a pretty capable character.
in a lot of ways. Not not superhuman by any means, but um, for a, for an average human, it's pretty good. This is pretty good. So yeah, that is going to be that. So let's. Uh, I think that is going to be it for me for this episode. I hope you all have enjoyed. Hope you uh, learned something. If you have ideas about kind of differences you would do when building this character, suggestions for how you might do stuff differently, um, as long as you are, you know, um, doing constructive criticism, that's fine. I know Hero System, the, um, the community has a bit of a reputation for being a little nitpicky and stuff like that and that's totally fine um but i'm not really as into that and so what i what i'm trying to say is that i would love to hear your ideas about how you might tinker with this character i'm not really interested in hearing hey you did all this shit wrong that's just i think that's totally fair to say um but yeah that is uh that is my 100 point cowpoke i hope that this helps out some uh new person trying to play hero system or trying to learn hero system gives them a bit of an idea about how all this stuff works and um i've been arlen walker i have been live from pelham's wasteland and i will see you next time partner